A little bit about myself. Um, I farm uh, just north of the U.S. border, 15, 15 miles north of Richford. Uh, me and my kids have 22,000 tops. And for better or worse, uh, four years ago, they made me one of the regional directors of the federation. Um, uh, in our federation, it's 12 president, 12 local presidents, county presidents, uh, and uh, president of the whole thing, Serge Bouillon. Uh, I'm the only one that's fairly fluent in English. My English isn't perfect, but um, so I get assigned to come down here and try and explain our our system to certain people that want to listen and figure out what we do. I'm not here to try and convince anybody. Um, I'm just here to give our information and um, you know, you hear lots of different things about the Federation and um, you know, the pros and the cons. Um, the cons always seem to take over. Um, the biggest trick in our system is to have a quota that over the medium term matches your ability to produce and if you have that um you know we do well from 2009 to 2016 um, within our quota i'm 97 percent paid yes we would like that three percent but our, our stability and stuff to um to go to banks um you know 15 years ago we would have got laughed out of the bank and now we have some real figures um, you have the ability to produce this um, you know the price is going to be about this you know and then the banker can say well maybe you're going to get 85 percent uh, maybe i'm going to be conservative and go at 80 percent you have this much revenue expenses are this does it work or does it so anyway i'm going to start um they tell me to push that button so we're going to talk about our marketing tools, the results, the future, and conclusion. So we're 13,500 producers, um, 7,300 farms, 12 regional unions, uh, two warehouses, annual sales over 300 million, 50 employees, and our mission is to promote Quebec's full production and, and maple syrup sale potential while respecting sustainable development principles. And it, I don't know if anybody has questions going along on. So this is where some of you guys probably wouldn't like it. Um, we pay a check off of 14 cents. It's divided into six and three quarter cents in promotion, uh, four cents for inventory management. That means whoops, taking the surplus syrup um, that we don't sell um, pasteurizing it, putting it in one-way drums, all that costs money. Uh, two and a half cents goes to the nuts and bolts, the, the people we hire in, in promotion, in you know just running our day-to-day -day operations. And uh, three quarters of a cent goes for the inspection. Every drum is inspected by an independent organization. Uh, we pay three quarters of a cent and the buyer pays three quarters of a cent. If you disagree with what they say, we have a revision process. So, um, but I recommend you don't revise too often. You don't win very often. Uh, they, they seem to have a pretty good handle on their, you know, it might go from a really bad taste to bad taste, but, um, you know, they, they seem to be really good at identifying good versus bad. Our tools. why organize um lots of producers not too many buyers um we've just had a big consolidation uh, you know i would say one buyer is going to buy about a third of our crop um you know we have you know we have 60 accredited buyers but some of them are even like somebody like myself that wants to market extra syrup they buy their syrup back um to you know, or they, or they need more syrup, they, they become an accredited buyer, but you know, some of them aren't very, aren't a very large volume. They fill the paperwork out in case it's a short season, so they have access. You know, five buyers control 90%. Uh, 
On the other hand, 7,000 sugar makers, uh, one buyer for 60. We have a, in our warehouse, a farmer can deliver um, directly there. We have about 700 producers that um, deliver directly to the, to, when it started out, everybody said, well, it's for the big guys, it's the big guys. It's turned because a lot of the big guys don't want to mess around with 20 drums. Cost too much. Getting the syrup there, returning the drums, big distances. Um, so it's, it's turned out in, in a lot of the small guys are finding that just taking it, you know, you get an appointment, you show up if you're on time, they unload your truck and you go home. We have no control over production, imbalance between supply and demand, weather. Anybody here been business in 2012? Do you remember? It wasn't fun. Um, increased pr productivity. Everybody's, you know, going with higher vacuum. Uh, they've been listening to Tim and Mark and Abby and we're all getting a lot more pounds of syrup per tap. All that goes into the equation. Um, you know, sugar bush, you know, increased number of taps, increased inventory without management. Um, as I say, we, we produced, uh, I think, 136 million pounds this year, 119 million pounds of good tasting syrup are within the quota and our global sales are still going to be close to 118 million. So, but some of the syrup is going to come out of the reserve. Uh, the people guiding us say that we have to rotate our stocks better. So every year we're going to try and close out a year because there's over quota syrup that's in there as well. We have the ability to pull back 20% of our product. If we have a bad year, we can pull back 20%. So it, it's, it's like money in the bank. If you know, it's always a good idea to have at least that much sitting in over quota because in December that check comes in pretty darn handy because you know, it means you had a bad year. Um, so, the, you know, and that's one of the changes that we've made in the system since its inception. It's become a little less rigid. If you go over quota, you know, because you've made some changes, not by adding taps, that's, you know, that can get you in quite a bit of trouble. But if you get better at it, if you have good weather for three years in a row, then you start to be able to have the ability to grow our quota. And just in that, in that use for next year, we add, we're adding 10 million pounds. Just because we, you know, 2015 wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. 16 and 17 were great. So about half of the people are going to get more quota again this year, just from that, not by adding taps, just because they're more productive. But at some point in time, you're going to have a year that isn't as good and, you know, that, that'll slow back down. And it's the yo-yo effect on prices. Um, you know, in 2000, we had a great year, took it to the buyer. Yeah, we're going to pay you when the price settles down. And they ended up paying us in April the next year, 50 cents a pound less than we were supposed to get. So it's when you have stuff like that, and we already have a farm organization in place, um, that stuff starts to get organized. And um, we also had a large packer went bankrupt um, that just seemed to have an inordinate amount of large producers. And they, um, you know, they lost their money. Plus, it was in 2000, and there was a government grant that they were they were given to just to try and keep going. So they didn't have the money for their syrup, and and they had to pay the grant back. So you know, they had a kind of like a double whammy. But those those people started to get organized, and you know, this is why we are are where we are. Uh, we started with a joint plan. 2000, we bought up uh, 30 some odd million pounds of syrup just because it, 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 was, it was one of those years like last year where it just ran. We started with a sales agency 
Then we established quotas. Quotas were established your two best years, plus 2004, an average of the three. Um, quality control, every drum is tested. Um, there's none that, that go through the system. And we have a promotion budget. Our promotion budget this year is 10 million. Ah, thank you. So the joint plan was adopted by 84% and I'm here for full disclosure. I would have been one of the 16%. Um, so, you know, so it makes the Federation a sole role. So when we send our syrup, it goes into the buyers. The buyers send the money to the Federation. The Federation sends the money to us. So gradually for Better or worse, um, you know, the inventory is a little higher than you'd like, but I don't think it's at a disaster level by any means. Um, the sales have doubled since 2010. So it's, uh, we found out what happened in 2008, 2009. Some people just left Maple because it became too expensive, too unstable. I think we're gradually capturing some of that business with some of our promotion, some of our health claims and stuff like that that you know it, it seems to be working it, it seems that sales are you know even talking to Bruce who would like to tell you that he has enough syrup till next Christmas um, you know he said sales are good he said there's no use beating around the bush um, they're good and that we're hearing the same thing I, my buddy trucks syrup for the big packer and, you know some of these Costco warehouses they'll take seven van loads a week so it's moving somewhere. And it, it serves a, as a toolbox for all other tools put in place later. So I, I don't know, I'd like personally to organize a, a tour for Americans of the reserve. It's, um, it's a great big pile of white one-way drums. But you know, we... Um, it seems that we have the recipe on how to condition it. Um, it. It seems to work. Even syrup from 2010 seems to be stable. Um, you know, we get very little. When we sell syrup out of the reserve, we can sell it. If the person wants to reclassify it, uh, it costs five cents extra. Very, very few people ask for a reclassification of what's on the drum. So presently it's, it's at 104, but I think it's down to 99 million pounds. And all that pyrrhic syrup we haven't got paid for. But it's, most of it's what we call over quota syrup. And there's 22 million pounds of well, and, um, transformation syrup, we're supposed to call it now. Which is buddy and really of off flavor and, and that sort of thing. This is the first year in many, many years we've actually sold more of that type of syrup than we produced. It was voted unanimous, unanimously by delegates. Um, so we negotiate every, uh, an agreement every two years on the nuts and bolts of the, you know, of what it is. Um, you know, the the bricks and, uh, you know, basically legal mumbo jumbo. It's, um, but, you know, all very important to, to have it in line and we negotiate the price every year. And it's been a long time since we've had, uh, the last time the, the buyers and us didn't agree, it goes to a tribunal and the tribunal, you know, you never go into a tribunal asking the status quo. So the, they just cut it in half and I don't think the, the buyers wanted to take that risk this year. So um, the only place we gave, um, if they increased their sales by 10%, um, for the first 10% they get a 10 cent a pound discount. So we worked it all out and you know in my case that could end up costing me 140 bucks but I'll sell 23,000 more syrup. So if, you know, it just keeps the incentive, you know, we try and fidelity or, you know, loyalty, you know, to buying from the reserve as opposed to, 
you know, we try and use what tools. I mean, it, you know, it costs money to bring syrup down here, it costs money to bring barrels back. Um, so, you know, these are just some of the tools that we try and use to keep our buyers engaged. So the, as I say, the Federation manages our payment. Uh, last year, even though it was a, a huge year, uh, we got paid 97% of our quota. This year it won't be that high, but we sold 11 million pounds out of the reserve. So as long as you were in the, you know, you, you're still gonna get a substantial amount of money. Uh, one other thing, uh, they, they mailed the paperwork. Um, we get a, uh, we can get an advance. Uh, it's two, 235 a tap, up to 100,000 bucks interest free. Well, it can go up to 400,000 bucks and uh, that's interest free. So that, that's one of the advantages. The first time you send syrup, they deduct it off, but it gives you cash flow and you're not, you know, if you need to buy a little thing to make life easier, um, you know, you, you have the you you have the money right there. Our crop insurance has also been upgraded substantially. Um, you know, it helps when you have two or three decent years where not many people are complaining are collecting the insurance. Um, you know the rates have come down, the price is up that they're paying. So it's um, you know one hundred twenty five thousand bucks worth of coverage is three hundred seventy five bucks. So you really, you know, most people are going to take it, I think. It, it was getting less advantageous before. So, the, you know, the Federation pays us. Uh, the buyers, um, they pay 30% in 30 days. And then as long as they have the syrup in stock, they pay, um, I think it's prime plus one. And then they make the payment in five payments, November, December, January, February, March. To, you know, so <clears throat> the 15th of March um, is, is the settlement date. That's when we get our money for the year. Our fiscal year runs from the 20, 1st of March to the 28th of February. And 15th of March, we get a payment. So that, that's how the quota, as I explained, were. And you need quota to sell to restaurant stores and, and stuff like that. That's uh, probably the biggest bone of contention. But you know, if somebody sets a big sugar bush up and tries to sell to a Hannaford's or whatever, and then somebody comes along and cuts him out of it, if he has no quota, then he has, then he has a problem. He usually goes to the next Hannaford's and cuts his price by 25 cents and everybody ends up selling their syrup for nothing. So, and for whatever reason, the, the four major chains in Quebec have been using syrup as a loss, loss leader. Uh, 540 millimeter, milliliters, I think it's 19 ounces. Well, our can, like we sell 90% of our syrup in, a, in those type of cans. Um, they've been literally four bucks US for, um, you know, almost every week, one of the chains has it on sale. So the quota is not attached to you, it's attached to your land, to your lot number. It's also uh, sap, syrup, and byproducts. It does not apply. We do not need quota. You can sell a million pounds if you want directly at the farm. You can go to farmers markets, uh, markets in the big city. There's no restrictions on that. There's no checkoffs. There's no. There's no nothing. You can pay somebody to sit at four farmers markets, as long as it's going directly to a consumer. It, it doesn't. It doesn't affect or concern us. So they like to say it's the only place where we inspect it all, but you know, I, I'm not quite that naive. Um, I expect if you take syrup to one of your buyers here, somebody inspects it. Uh, it's probably the buyer that inspects it here. Anyway, I, I think most people think our system works fairly well. 
Um, we have um, 16 teams. They, they do um, 250 drums per day. Um, so depending on the size of the drums, uh, I think we have two electronic testers which allow them to do 500 drums because as our production grows and everybody wants to sell their syrup in May and June, there's a bottom end. A little, it's not so bad if the season starts fairly early, but when we have a late season, it just, um, but in most years, um, by the middle of July, it's all inspected. Unless something, you know, but what does happen sometimes somebody, you know, a buyer said, if you keep your syrup to the 1st of September, I'll give you five cents a pound. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how paying that is unless you have a refrigerator warehouse or something. You, you take a chance of it downgrading. So, you know, last year we did 250,000 drums. So our promotion, uh, as they say, 10 million. Uh, we target, um, we're, we're putting a, a bigger push on home this year. Uh, we're doing England, uh, England, Germany, uh, a bit in the US, quite a bit in Canada. Research and development. Um, there's some people at the University of Rhode Island that are doing research for us. Um, you know, and as I say, it, it works out to about 10 million. We always hold some back because we want to be able to keep it going every year because these funds are based on the production year because it's a checkoff. So if you have a bad year, um, you know, you, you have less money available. So we want to keep continuity. Yes? Uh, what's your biggest obstacle to breaking into a new market? Getting syrup known, I guess. Uh, you know, just off the top of my head, um, we're, we're very pleased with Germany and um, England. Um, Canada has a free trade agreement with Europe now. Uh, it's lowered our tariffs. Uh, I think to the detriment of you guys here, uh, you know, eight, between 8 and 17%, uh, it's a lot of profit margin. We've also signed T TTP, which um, you wouldn't think would have much effect, but apparently uh, some of these com com countries in it, in Asia, have sugar tariffs. And, um, you know, maple syrup gets mi mixed up in that. It's, it wasn't the idea of, of the tariff, but it, it probably resulted from some other reason. But since maple syrup is sugar, there's tariffs. They predict that some of these countries, uh, you know, will be able to expand because some of the tariffs are quite significant, which you added on to a product that's a little bit expensive anyway, or it, it doesn't help. So um, we're supposed to know more about that in March. Um, but, you know, the, our, our research still says that as maple syrup, maple syrup is directly correlated to the U.S. economy. The better your economy is here, the better maple syrup sells globally, because you you know you're still the big consumer. You're close; people have heard of it. Um, you know, yet you know we're, we're we're also putting some money in India. You know, and we sort of rolled our eyes at the federation and. The girl said, well, there's more millionaires in India than there are people in Canada. So I said, oh, well, and uh, I mean, sometimes it's in, in conjunction with government grants. Um, you know, we'll give you this amount of money if you match it. And, you know, and they try and do it in conjunction with other agricultural products. They'll have a trade mission or something. The result. You know, you can see the, the prices. You know, most of us are, I'm looking around, and most of us have realized most of these ups, these downs, and since 2009, you know, 
it's better, it's stable, and it gives us the ability to, to borrow money if we need to. If you want to go buy a farm or to ask for it, uh, it's, it, you know, you know, the idea of it attaching to the land, it doesn't have a value. It's not like our milk quota where, you know, if you want to sell some, you, you just put it on the electronic option. But, you know, the bottom line is that there's two values of sugar bushes, those with quota and those without, just because of the revenue potential. You know, I'm not talking, you know, a thousand taps probably still has the same value. But, you know, a 10,000 tap sugar bush with a decent quota on it, you know, has some sort of a guaranteed revenue. This is our new image. Not sure what that's going to be. Some Quebec producers say, why well, don't we put it from Quebec? And you know, our people say, when you go overseas, you have to attach everything to the maple leaf, to, to the Canadian flag. So. so we're trying to, you know, with the, you know, everybody has the same grades now. It should take some of the confusion out. You know, amber is not as bad a word in Canada as it used to be. You know, it's, uh, Amber syrup was something that, you know, most people in our area would have thought was table syrup, where now it's the, it's the grade probably most sought after. Um, you know, the, the sort of medium gravy you can hit all the time. You know, and we're going to beat that record this year. You know, it's a, you know, as I say, we're, we sit there and we're, we're very pleased with the, with the progress. You know, all it takes is, is it's not even a bad year, just an average year, like a seven year average year of production. And, um, you know, the, there'll be syrup going out of the reserve. You know, the sales have just, I don't know, exploded isn't the right word, but the curve is going in the right direction. And these are some of the selling points. Uh, you know, our, our maple sap sales, our provisions have increased uh, four or five fold. Uh, I know Mike seems to think it's going in that way. And, it just, um, you know, everything is on an upward tick right now. You know, we've had some people doing some studies and, you know, this is our goal in 2023 to sell 185 million pounds a year. So, you know, we're roughly 120. So, you know, this is where we're trying to, you know, whereas before we just were sort of muddling through, um, now we, we, we have a vision. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can, can come in the way of that. You know, big economic downturn worldwide again, all, the, all these things, but, you know, if, if things go sort of as planned, that's where we hope to be in 2023. So, you know, you, you, you know, obviously we're going to have to add taps so if, if that's the case. Uh, unemployment says, or employment, finding people to work is also starting to be a, a big issue. Um, you can't drive by a shop in Quebec that you know that has 200 people without saying we're hiring it's, it, it's one after the other unemployment's a historic never seen low in Quebec um, so you know it's, it's all right to say we're gonna top a lot more trees but we're gonna have to start to find people to do it um, you know I, I know that you know there's some talk about you know workers from afar but I'm just not sure from, I'm not sure they, they do really well in market gardens and milking cows, but uh, the word snow doesn't seem to, 
turn them on. It's um, just anecdotally what I hear. Um, you know, the, it's all, you know, they do really, really well in the warm weather, but apparently their hands get cold. We added five million caps. Um, I would, if I had a crystal ball, I would say this year they'll probably four of the five million caps. Um, Crown land is 20% in, in Quebec. Uh, it takes longer. Um, you're dealing with the government. You gotta get your block of land settled with the government. Um, they, um, things, when you get into the government level, move very, very slow in Quebec. It's complicated. Um, they really like killing trees because there's paper like you wouldn't believe. But uh, it's just, once you're used to it, it's part of the, it's part of the way, yeah. So I heard a lot of talks about the Federation, and, and I generally think you guys are doing a good thing to stabilize the market. Um, what are your thoughts on the price stable? Do you have any capability or any interest in expanding the Federation outside of Canada, i.e. in the U.S.? Anybody got a gun here? <laughs> uh, no, look, we're, we're looking after ourselves. I, I mean, uh, anybody that wants to talk, but uh, like, uh, just knowing what I know, hearing what I hear anecdotally around the halls, uh, I, I just don't see it. I, I'd like to see the U.S. get organized. And start to do like you, you know, you guys letting Dave Marvin and Bruce Baskin and Maple Grove do all your marketing for you. Uh, I'm not so sure that's a good thing. You know, I, I think um, you know we have some. We also run. Uh, we have a budget of two hundred and fifty thousand that will partner up with a with a packer for generic advertising. Um, you know, I, I you know it's. You know, it's all right to have a free marketing, but you guys are getting free marketing. Like, you know, it's all right to produce a product, and, you know, to be the best you can be. But at some point in time, somebody has to sell this damn stuff. And, um, you know, anecdotally, well, not anecdotally, we, we find our, we're, we're getting a good value out of our marketing dollars. It costs money to hire qualified people. Um, you know, just running a website in a, country and keeping it updated and you know you blow a hundred thousand dollars fast and you can say you know it, it it's incredible how much it costs but you know with the web and all these sort of things uh, you know people are you know yes India has a lot of poor people but it has a lot of rich people and, and even middle class people that are you know that are looking for a bit of luxury and but you have to be there you know, they have to be able to find out about your product. But, um, you know, I know in New Brunswick, they had a vote on making something similar to Quebec, and it, and it, it didn't pass. So, um, you know, much as I'd like to be hopeful, if it doesn't pass in New Brunswick, I don't think it's going to pass in the States. Would be my, you know, because it's, you know, and anyway, just, you know, because it, it is money. You take, you know, our quota and 14 cents a pound, it's a, it's a big chunk of money. But if you stabilize the market, I've seen your analysis, it does pay back to the producers in the long run, but it takes that big... You know, the, the one... The, 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 you hear all kinds of things. Somebody that sort of half-heartedly joined and might not have told everybody in 2004 how much syrup he was selling, when the quotas were were established and has been, been behind the eight ball and has to send a lot of over quota every year and for whatever reason doesn't get it adjusted because he doesn't want GPS of his land and for, for a myriad of reasons. If you're in that situation, the Federation don't do it for you. But as I say, if, if you're relatively legal, you don't have more tops than you're supposed to, and uh, or you have more tasks, you can you can justify them in on farm sales. Um, it, it works all right. It um, it really does. But the year that you know last year, you know I, I shipped thirty five drums of over quota. 
You know, I, I could wait 10 years to get paid for it. But I got, you know, you, you, you ask people with a crop like we had last year, what the price point would be. And you know, it, it's not, it wouldn't have been 220 a pound or 210 a pound or $2 a pound. It would have been a buck and a half a pound. You have to realize when you put a floor under your market, I don't think there's any doubt about that. But the downside for you guys is when it's a short year and your price used to spike up, I think all your buyers are going to tell you, well, I'm buying it in Quebec cheaper. You know, that's, we take the top off as well. So it's, but, you know, I'd a lot rather have the top taken off than the bottom. Because if you start losing 50, 60 cents a pound off your whole crop, you know, like we, we put 3 million pounds out last December, had a bit of a rebate. But, you know, in the end, it didn't cost us that much because we didn't have to pay to put it in a drum. You know, it cost us around 23 cents to buy the drum. Steel's expensive, so drums are expensive. You know, they've gone up 20 bucks a drum just in the last three years. With the amount of drums that we have sitting in that warehouse, it's, it's you know, 20, even 20 bucks is a lot of money. 